Yo, yo, what up? It's Golden Spaces. We are back after a beatdown. You guys can read the title right there. Warriors are embarrassed by the Pelicans. Almost a 40-piece. Um, mm -hmm. Way to follow up an uh, embarrassing loss to Toronto with another blowout. Steve said they wouldn't get blown out like that again. And they got blown out worse. Yeah. Uh, but I believed him when he said that. Because I was like, there's no way they would come <laughs> back out and do even worse. So basically got doubled up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Crazy. Okay. All season we've been saying like, yo, this team is losing a lot of close games to good teams, which is true. Um, yeah. And now they're getting blown out. I mean, obviously, Draymond, Chris, and Gary are all out. Those are three of your best players, three of your top eight probably, um, maybe even higher than that. That's going to hurt, but to get blown out by almost 40 mm. after you got blown out both games at home, it's pretty mm. nasty work. It's pretty nasty work. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Chris would have changed anything in this one because he's still shorter mm -hmm. than Pods. Yeah. And Corey. Look, I, I, look, Corey might be the same height as Chris. I don't know, but I don't, I don't know that Chris – would have made that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. Let's see. They had 17 turnovers as a team. Maybe he'd make a difference there, but there was he wasn't going to change the outcome of this game. Um, mm -hmm. And that just brings us back to what we've been saying the last week or two. Let's fire up them trade machines. Let's get Mike and get pick up that phone. He was talking to Masai with Jiri <laughs> after the game or during the game, whatever. <laughs> let's 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 get it going, man. Like honestly, I mean, I'm not as high on Siakam as everyone else seems to be. Mm -hmm. uh, just I guess because of who we'd have to give up for him, and he still isn't he in his thirties? I mean, twenty nine. Okay. Again, I just feel like what we would probably have to give up for his, for what he probably would be asking for. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like mm, let's keep shopping just a little bit, just just a little bit. You know, no rush, but rush. Uh, <laughs> like if he happens to fall in our laps. I'm not like going to turn it away, mm -hmm. but I think the player that really should exit is Wiggins. Okay. So go, go back to, <laughs> go back yeah. to the point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to speak towards your Siakam point, he is 29 in about 300 days or so. So in oh. April, he will be 30, which means, if you brought him in and extended him for the maximum amount that you can extend him, which would be two more seasons after this, um, you'll have him through age 32 or 32 okay. and some change. Um, it's a risk involved with that, right? Considering he's a athleticism based player, he is very skilled, but he can, you never know when guys athleticism kind of take that dip. And then you would be kind of left with a diminished version of him. Worst case scenario. But there's always the best case scenario where he's kind of maintains what he is now or even improves upon it, playing next to players like Steph, Clay, and Draymond. And, you know, you get a very, very good all NBA, all star caliber player. So it all depends. All this stuff is like pros and cons to everything that you do. Right. Right. You gotta, right. You got to take a gamble either way. You're going to take a gamble. But um, I think we can agree that, you know, Andrew probably got to go, you know. Um, it's unfortunate, just kind of like the the trajectory that his Warriors career kind of took. We went from the highest of the high, right? Like we started off blank slate, thinking like, "Hey, right, like, hey, new scenery, right, right." We don't really know because Steph uh, broke his hand, mm -hmm. so he didn't really get to go with him that first year that he was with us, and then. You know, hey, everybody's back. Let's do it. We, you know. And then it was no clay. <sighs> right. Then no mm -hmm. clay. So, you know, but then 22, 
It's like, <laughs> who is this guy? I, mean, I know. Woo. I just, I, I mean, know. no one can, no one can explain what happened, right? Like, it's it, very, it. very bizarre. Because it's it's different if he just took a minor regression, right? Maybe he went from forty percent from three to like thirty three percent, or maybe he isn't as quite as good on defense, but he's still pretty good. He's completely fallen off a cliff in every aspect of his basketball game. Every aspect, like yeah. it, there's no place we can turn to be like, well, you know, oh, well, you know what, free throws, <laughs> yeah. Well, no only turn there. That is it. Free throws. Yeah, free throws, free throws. I mean, I saw a stat that Slater posted the other day where it was like the Warriors are like plus 160 or something in the minutes that he doesn't play this season, and they're like minus 150 in the minutes he does mm-hmm. play in the season. I mean, a, a minus – what is that, a minus 300 net swing or something like that? Something crazy, right? <laughs> Imagine if he's just neutral in his minutes. Imagine if they just don't lose his minutes at all. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably the like the, the, the top five seed in the league. I'm not saying that the, the entire season is his fault, but I'm saying like this is a huge reason why the season has gone the way it's gone. Like a player that you depended on to be one of your three or four best players on your team is now one of the worst players in the league relative to what he's asked to do. Right, his role and his expectation, it's it's not even close. Um, and is playing garbage time, like he's garbage time in his prime. That's another thing. It's like he's in his prime. Like Clay, slight regression, sure, expect it. Steph, expect it. Um, Draymond has been off the court for reasons that are not expected. Well, maybe they are, right. but they shouldn't be. But you're 28 in your prime. We're about to be 29 very soon. But still, these are your prime years. From 25 to like 31 is typically uh, an all-stars prime. And completely falling. People say, oh, he's going back to Minnesota Wiggins. Like, this is worse. This is like yeah. unprecedented. At least Minnesota Wiggins scored. Right. Scored. <laughs> we can't get, what, he had, what, four points today? It's Five? crazy. It's insane. It's, it, I, I don't – and he had a good second half, like second quarter. It mm. was like, look at this. He was, of course, out there with Steph, Clay, I think Moses, and TJD. I think that was the lineup. And that's when they went on the run. And it was – and he was, like, in it. Like, mm-hmm. he was on Brandon Ingram. He was doing the thing. And I thought, okay, clearly – Come the third quarter, he's going to keep that up. I, I absent. It's truly bizarre. Can't really explain it at all, um, and it's unfortunate. But it's also it puts a damper on, I guess, like any type of trade talks because, like, who wants to trade for who this? Who wants right? to? Right. Minnesota had to attach the pick that eventually became Jonathan Kaminga to Andrew Wiggins. Just to get D'Angelo Russell, <laughs> who everybody knows is not some world beater, right? I mean, D'Angelo Russell had came off an all-star campaign like a, a year and a half right. before that. So his value was up higher than what it is now. But, man, um, Mike is going to have to get creative with it. Um, but I think at this point, maybe you have to wait to the summer. But I think at this point, the, the Golden State tenure – for for Andrew Wiggins has to probably come to a close, and it's just it's just kind of sad. It's kind of sad. It is sad. It really is sad because I don't want him to have to go out this kind of way. Right. Like it. It just go out on a high note, but yeah. you're just you're literally just killing us. Mm-hmm. It's like you and Clay both started together just slumping. Mm-hmm. Clay got his legs up under him, found his way out of that. We thought Wiggins would. He still is back there. I, we can't explain it, and I do feel bad because I liked Wiggins for us. Mm-hmm. He helped us win that championship for sure. We're not taking that from him. However, we can't continue with this Andrew Wiggins that we have seen. 
no rhyme or reason, but he's got to go. He yeah. can go to Detroit. Listen, they might take him. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think at they have point, anybody we want. But. We, listen, anybody at this point that mm-hmm. they give us has to be better than what Wiggins is giving us. For because sure. right now it's got nada. Yeah. <sighs> and I mean, like, it might be time for Steve to do what he kind of did to Loon. I mean, once Draymond comes back, I'm assuming Draymond's coming back, like, probably next game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Look, know if he can continue to watch this. It'll be, it'll be like Celebrini. Tell us what, yeah. what? Yeah. But again, he should have been working out. They said he was working out while he was away. Like, he should have at least just been working out. Granted, game times. It's a little different. It's, it's right. He might be on a minutes restriction, and we might get a good 20 minutes, and we'll take it. hmm Yeah. And just give the rest of those minutes to Moses because. Yep. Because we see right. Mr. Stay Ready. Mr. Stay Ready. Came out, and that was that line. We finally got to see Clay and Moses really be in a lineup for a good stretch of time. And guess who started that third quarter? Moses Moody. Moses Moody. I mean, you look at his last three games that he actually played. He got garbage time against Detroit. Um, But tonight, 21 points in 25 minutes. The game before, 21 points in 22 minutes. In the game against Miami, 11 points in 13 minutes. Each of these three games, we're looking at it like, dang, Moses is coming in and he's making an impact. And they're losing. And it's like, Nobody on the team's got it going. Moses comes in and he makes an immediate impact. He's scoring the ball. He's defending. Um, he's getting steals, yeah. he's getting blocks. He's trying to take charges. He's actually challenging people at the rim. He might get a foul here or there because of that, but he's actually playing extremely hard. Yep. And giving you energy on both ends of the court. He's probably going to have to be included in some deal because teams are going to want him. But it's a shame because he's a good player and he can be a good player for this team. Yeah. The fact that they haven't seen that he should be playing a lot more up to this point is just kind of I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> uh, uh yeah, I there there's no explanation really. I just think that if yeah, you would say of course teams would be looking at him, but I'm kind of switching it to Kaminga. Granted He's Lacob's pick, mm-hmm. so that's going to be tough to move him. But I don't think that he had any kind of stellar game tonight. I really felt like mm-hmm. bad body language, once again, just uh, he didn't have anything in the first half to me. Not really playing defense all that well. Mm-hmm. I just thought that this game was really poor. And, yeah, he had – flashes here and there but i wasn't really feeling it at all that i was just like dude do you want to compete right because you you got to do your job Mm -hmm. and you're not doing it yes it's kind of interesting ever since he put that article out or that story out after the denver game he's kind of been super mid but that's the, the thing is like he's still extremely young um he's 21 years old He's not going to be 22 until next October. So he's a mm-hmm. young 21 Yeah. Um, until this October is 2024. But this is kind of like what you deal with when you have young players, right? They're going to show extremely high highs and they're going to show low lows. They're going to be a little bit more temperamental. They're going to be, you know, not all of them. Like Mo- Moses mm-hmm. is pretty even. Moses. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what like, you're going to get basically. Yeah. You know what you're going to get from Moses. Um and if you're going to go after a guy like Pascal or you're going to go after any type of big name player, it's going to knock Jonathan down the pecking order even more, even if he's on this team. And is he how is he going to handle that? Right. Mm-hmm. Should he be able to go somewhere where he can really spread his wings? I think he probably should um, just for his career. He got a payday coming up. I do believe he's one of the better young players in the league. So he should get a role and a payday that reflects that. But can he get that in Golden State? I don't know. Um is he going to mature fast enough as a player and as a person to be able to help them win a championship anytime soon in a, in a legit role, like as a top 
five or six player on the team? I don't know, but it's not likely, right? It's just hard for a player that young. Even the best of the best players at his age is hard. Um, I mean, we saw last year in the finals, like MPJ, uh, MPJ is a young player, but he's even older than Jonathan. And in the finals, he looked unplayable at times. Like, yeah, it's really hard to be that good on a championship level at, at that age, right? Um, even the best of the best, like I said, next to great players, they're going to struggle at times because they're just, they just haven't seen enough. They haven't been through enough basketball, all of that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, when it comes and to maybe trade, this, maybe this wasn't his, his matchup. Like maybe this just yeah. wasn't. I mean, and he the usually plays well against the Pelicans too, like, because they got, they got size, but they don't have a lot of foot speed out there. Um, but they got uh, tonight. Her, her, it certainly yeah, did tonight. looked like they did. They did tonight. <laughs> they got Jeez. Herb and, and Trey Murphy out there who are pretty good athletes and pretty uh, mobile out there. But usually Valanciunas and, and Zion are pretty much left in Kaminga's dust. And it just wasn't the case tonight. But pretty much, I mean, what I get from this, these last few games is they need kind of a, an overhaul. Not necessarily like trading like six, seven guys, but they need to, in, they need to introduce a couple of players. It's not just one move that's going to yeah. change this team or, or put this team on the right track. They need a couple of moves. I personally think, and I put this on Twitter um, early today, I think they need a perimeter guy, like a three and D guy, someone who's going to play the Wiggins role, right? Ideally it would be Wiggins, but he just hasn't been that. And it doesn't look like he's going to be that, but somebody who can hit threes guard, guards point of attack um and just play within the flow with high energy right like moses is kind of like that but moses isn't the athlete that we kind of need in that position um to be able to guard a De'Aaron fox or be able to guard a john Morant. like moses can't do that right. um but he's a good backup for somebody like that and then you need an interior guy that can score on their own Valentinus. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, somebody like a Pascal, you know, like he can get his own shot. Um, he can pass to other people. Veteran, been through the been through playoffs, won a championship, has playoff experience, understands the hierarchy of the team and being able to fit in and amplify guys around him and stuff like that. They they need one of those guys. A name that's been floated around recently, well today was um DeJounte Murray. Uh, listen, I well I I like the John the D Murray. I liked him <laughs> in, in the on the Spurs. I liked what he did there. On mm-hmm. the Hawks, it just feels like him and Trey don't really gel that well together. Mm-hmm. So and let's say yeah, we welcome him to the Warriors now. Does he understand he's coming off the bench? Or are you looking at what? him as a starter? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Or is he a starter, but can he flippy flop in that role? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, sometimes you're going to have to come off the bench. Like, I, I just want to know, like, where he is – is he comfortable in his game? Is he comfortable maturity wise to come on to a championship team? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my question, right? The maturity level, the ego, stuff like that. Like you, he came from San Antonio where it's very structured and it's like you have to do things within this system. You are not right. above the organization. You are not above the team. And then it kind of went sour there. And he went to Atlanta where it's like him and Trey running the show. And it's like, will you be okay stepping to a team where you're not the first, the second, or the third guy on the as far as the hierarchy? The pecking of order. The pecking yeah. Order. That's my only thing. I think as a player, he he could fit nicely. Um, I think he would start. He would just push Clay to the three for sure. Which I think mm-hmm. Clay is a three now, pretty much. Like Clay's not gonna go out there and match up with the quick guards anymore. Right, right. He's someone who's much better on the wing, and he guards wings very well. So I don't think yeah. he would have an issue defensively there. And then on offense, they all fit next to each other anyway. But I yeah. think he'll be able to be the guy that can stay in front of the quick guards, um, 
play defense, put some pressure on the rim off the dribble, which is also something mm-hmm. that they need. Um, his spot up shooting is kind of eh. Like he's ne- he's never been a shooter. He's been more of like a mid range dude and kind of get into the lane. But I think his spot up shooting is okay. And yeah, I think he would fit. But it's more so. Like I a, think so too. But what's that price tag on him? That's, that's another question. The thing they got him for a haul. They got him for like a bunch of picks and all yep. that stuff. And I don't I'm think like, his value. <laughs> I don't think his value was quite as high as it was when he first got him because he was coming off an all star appearance. But um, whereas now he's clearly not that level of player but maybe he could really help a team what is the price that's the question and if the price is a chris paul expiring because atlanta wants to get off money Mm -hmm. then it's like okay does that affect your ability to get pascal is it possible to get both i think it is sound like you (laughs) that sounds pretty greedy but um i i like the jante murray Mm. i like him i like him you convinced me even more. Like I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it on, on paper. Squad. It's working. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing it on paper. But a lot of the let's say bad habits that you could potentially get from playing with a Trey Young, as far as like the laziness on defense mm-hmm. and some of the other things. Mm-hmm. Like I don't really want to do the dirty work because I'm just kind of like the guard I'm guy. Vibing. Yeah, I'm vibing. Vibing. <laughs> it's like can he get well, when he gets to Golden State, can all the guys bring that dog back out of him where he's just like kind of fighting for his NBA life and trying to trying to make his name in the league. Will they be able to pull that out of him? If they do, I think he would be crazy for the Warriors. Um, but if not, it's gonna be it's gonna be weird. But again, can they get both? Is the question. <laughs> right. Hey, that is real quick. So reporting from uh, Anthony Slater, Draymond apparently scrimmaged today. That's yeah, huge. That's huge. He gonna be back. Okay. Real. Okay. Look, we we might play one road game and then all right, that's it. Who Draymond got? back. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because who they got? The Bucks. Oh, that's oh, who they, they play first. No, no, the Bucks are on back to back, but they're the second. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Chicago, then Milwaukee. I'm pretty sure okay. Yeah, yeah, it All is. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, so thank you, producer Greg, um, <laughs> for that info. Yep. So shucks. Okay. All right. Everybody get your mind right. Get your mind right. But yeah. <laughs> no, but I think Murray and I, you think we could actually get both? All right, let me explain how this both? Goes. Let me explain how this can go, right? So the Warriors have two big-ish contracts that they don't want. I, I'd assume, right? <laughs> Wiggins is one, 24 right. mil. CP3 is the other, that's 30 mil. Right. So the contract matching pretty much goes there, right? They have young guys who other teams would want. Unfortunately, Moses is included there. I would love to keep Moses, but teams might ask for him. We've already heard about the Raptors asking about him. And Jonathan Kaminga is obviously one as well. The Warriors also have multiple first round picks that they can send out in trades. 2028 first round pick, 2030 first round pick. Uh, I believe they have this year's as well, and they can remove the protection on it or something like that. But they have like at least two to three that they can attach to any deal. Dejounte Murray makes 18 million this year. Then it starts kicking in 25, 26, 27, mm, stuff like that. Okay. Siakam is obviously an expiring 37 million. CP3 and Ooh. Minga's contract equals Siakam's contract. If you add a first round pick to that, I think that's a pretty good deal for the Raptors. I, but I don't see Joe really coming off of Kaminga since that is his sure. pick. How about just you know, throwing in some first, we keep Moody. We don't have to lose Moody. You know, you just sit Andrew and some first, like just you know. <laughs> Andrew and some first. <laughs> and, Chris, Chris. and Chris. And Chris. <laughs> I mean, potentially, if teams go for that, then I think the Warriors would be ecstatic to just move to just dump Wiggins and in, in some first to get an actual good player back. Um. But I don't know if that's realistic. 
And um, yeah, I'm just saying, like, if they were to try to go after both players, this is what they have available to them to go after those players, right? Big contract to match, young player to sweeten it, first round pick to sweeten it. You have two packages here. You can give one to Toronto. You can give one to Atlanta. <laughs> and now you have a legitimate starting five. This is this is a pipe dream, obviously. But like now you have a starting five of Steph, Murray, Clay, Siakam, Draymond. That's pretty, pretty potent. You got offense all throughout it. You got defense all throughout it. And then all it will cost you is <laughs> two players who you don't want anymore and two young guys who you're either not playing or would be – pushed out of not a rotation but like will be pushed down in the rotation by the acquisition of these two players anyway um mm. that's my that's my soapbox i guess proposal on what they can do to immediately make this team not a contender for this year probably but like for next year for sure well listen who's to say we can't turn this around after all-star break plenty of teams have done that all I'm saying is teams have done that. The West pe- teams are losing and stuff. It's kind of, you know, kind of up and down there that we could still, hey, we turn this around after All-Star break. Hey, cruising for a bruising. But what I'm saying is with that, plus there being at least one trade happening, because mm-hmm. I, I definitely think they're trading somebody's. Um, and I just hope Moody's not involved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. But it's like he is – what Moody has done in his limited minutes that he gets has shown that other teams would want him. So mm-hmm. he, like, just think about that. The limited times that he gets out there – Teams see it and they want him, and we're just willing to give him away. But anyway, all right, I gotta get past it. I've got to accept it that at some mm. point it probably will happen. He will be in the mix, and it will be unfortunate for us. Um, yeah. but Moody's a victim we'll of this whole thing. Yeah, Moody's a victim of this whole thing. Really, since he got drafted, right? He got drafted to a team that couldn't play him a ton of minutes out the gate. Yo yoed, but they but they could play him in the playoffs. Played in the playoffs, <laughs> right? <laughs> Played in the playoffs, helped positively contribute in the playoffs, only to return the next regular season and not play. Yeah. Um, played in the playoffs again, positively contributed, <laughs> returning in the regular season the next year to play and then have his spot taken by a rookie because they refused to let that rookie take a veteran spot. So that rookie has to now take a young guy's spot. Um, and now he's out of the rotation. Then he gets back in the rotation and says, like, hey, guys, I'm still very good at basketball. <laughs> I cannot play for, like, three, four games in a row or 20 games in a row, and I'm still going to be good whenever you put me on the court. Um, and now he's probably going to be thrown into some trade attached to a player that he's better than just to sweeten up the deal and bring in another player, you know, that, that can help this team, I guess, in the in the present, but he can help the team in the present. So, yes, <laughs> we have both. <laughs> really, really, hope, I know, right? I really hope they find a way to keep Moody out of whatever deal they can get, and they can actually get good players back. But yeah, um, it's just Jared it's, Allen was our other choice. Yeah, for a center. Who so. knows if Cleveland is actually selling on him? Um, that would be amazing, though. Right, because he's he's putting up really good numbers, right? Twenty and twenty, yeah. he's getting five, six assists from a center position. I think he would fit perfectly in the Warriors system. And um, yeah, it's just a weird thing, but hey, as long as Mike is working out something, then I think we can we got something to look forward to. But I mean, just back to your point about teams have turned it around. Like Boston in twenty twenty two, I think is the 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 reference point, right? They were seventeen mm-hmm. and nineteen. And they turned it around and got all the way back to the finals and were pretty much the best team in the regular season all the way yeah. like after that trade. I think they traded for Derek White and they took off from there. Um, that's like the reference point there <laughs> to try to try to it can happen. It can happen. We've seen it happen. We've seen the Lakers last year make a trade, make a bunch of trades, and then 
kind of take off from there. I think that was kind of fluke, but it's possible. Uh, so you never know. Yeah. And I choose to stay positive throughout. Yeah. So even, even though we got the doors blown off us tonight, um, (laughs) you know, (laughs) we still have to remain positive, uh, Mm -hmm. here because we could still turn it around. There's still, we've got this road trip coming up. We could do some things for sure. And hopefully that includes winning. Yeah. I mean, I think Draymond is obviously going to inject a lot of life into this team, particularly into Steph, right? Because Steph has looked like he don't even want to be here for the for the last few games. Four for 13 tonight, 15 points. He is now definitely under 40 percent from three now this season. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but he started the season blistering from three and is slowly yeah. down. He's at. Yeah, 39.8. It's probably going to go even lower than that after tonight. He wants Hmm. some help. I think it's very clear that he's not at the age anymore where he just feels like he can um, carry everything on his shoulders. It's kind of like, uh, get me some help. You look around the league, LeBron got AD. KD got Booker and Bill, even though they miss a bunch of games all the time. Luka got Kyrie. And B got Maxi at this point, like, I mean, like everybody got somebody, right? Stuff got stuff got Clay and Dre, but Clay and Dre ain't in their primes no more, right? Right, and I mean all the all of Steph's peers from years past have somebody else. Kawhi got Paul George and Harden, you know. Giannis got Dame, and then yep. all the young dudes that's coming up and pushing them, they got somebody too. <laughs> Jokic got Murray, Shea got yep. Steph and Jalen Williams, like. Everybody got some type of high-end offensive talent next to them to make their lives and their jobs easier on a game-by-game basis. And Steph, and to a lesser extent, Clay, do not. Teams are throwing a kitchen sink at both of them. They're 32, 33-plus. Steph's about to be 36. Um, They're they're not 27, 26 anymore to be able to just go, 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 and still figure it out against these coverages. They, They need some help. They need some help. This this is how they're supposed to ride off into the sunset in this last part of their career, having some having other players do a lot of the not heavy lifting. Heavy lifting. But yeah. Do, but do some, some lifting. Lift. Some. Look. <laughs> they need give me some. Some. <laughs> Just lift some. But we saw that. But we saw that as they started to click in that special moment there. And then mm-hmm. Moses got subbed out and it all went to pitch. Yep. So. Yep. Exactly. Because you you saw they were they were, they were clicking. clicking. They were clicking. They just need everything energy. Everything was moving. Yes. They just need consistent energy with talent attached to it, obviously. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like all season, it's been you play the high energy guys, you win. You play the low energy guys or the guys who pick and choose when they want to bring high energy, and you lose. When the high energy guys can hit shots too, that's when you get the moment that we had earlier in this game. Um, mm-hmm. Where Moses came in, he was hitting a bunch of shots, he was playing super hard. It energizes everybody. Like that's the Warriors' way, and they just haven't yeah. had enough of that this this season. So they got to go out and find it. And in my opinion, they should keep the guys who bring the energy, like Moses, like Pods, like Trace. Yeah. Uh, and try to find a way to move off of the guys who don't consistently bring the energy. And whether or not they can get good players back for it <laughs> is a. Yeah, because listen, and all we can do is hope that Mike Dunleavy Jr. is behind the scenes cooking up something, but cooking up something that's going to be really good for us, mm-hmm. you know? And I, that. Let's just hope it's just something good that we can use that will propel us and really get us back on the good foot because that's what we need. So yeah, and this game you could just throw it in the trash because I, I I don't even understand how they came out the way they came out. It was just bizarro. Mm-hmm. But then also the Pelicans not missing anything. Just, right. It felt like they went 30 for 30 from three. 
That's That's what it felt like. Is and it was the same thing with the Raptors too. Yep, can't miss. I think (laughs) I think it's a combination of bad luck and also just teams are smelling blood early. They're like, oh yeah, this team is a is a wounded deer on the side of the road mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> and they just going in there like wolves <laughs> and, they, and they're yeah, like their right. head their coaching staff is like listen they down in the dumps they ain't got draymond they ain't got gary yep. and they just lost chris and they just got blowed out like yep come on if we attack them early we will get them out of the game and yep. that's exactly what happened Yep. Until we started going on a run, and then you started. Uh oh, look, er- everybody got it. okay. Wait, 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 wait. We can't let up. We can't let up. And then you know, self sabotage. Kurt just says, "You know what? I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna just throw these dudes in here." And it was disastrous. <laughs> yeah. I think a part of it is like understanding. He's probably last done year. too. He's just probably like, "Oh my gosh, like we mm-hmm. can't catch a break." Like. Yeah. Yeah, I think a part of it is learning from last year where last year they would do a lot of these games where they would come back and win at the end or come back and lose at the end. And it's like it was already so much energy to win these games. And it's like if you have to do that to win these games, your team is not good. So you might as well save Steph's legs, save Clay's legs. That's exactly (laughs) that towel was. I was like, oh, wow, we really. And it was early. Mm -hmm. He. They didn't play the fourth, right? I don't think they. I don't think so either. He did the same thing against Toronto. It's like, okay, third quarter run. We got it down to 12, got it down to 10. And then he's like, well, we just played Steph and Clay for like 10 minutes straight. You're straight. You got to get a break. (laughs) Got to sit him at some point. As soon as you sit him, back up to 20. Oh, yeah, they're not coming back in. So, yeah, changes got to be made. I think it's pretty obvious. Um, Hopefully it's you know, something that we can all be happy about. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. I don't think we're going to be happy to see anyone go because we like all sure. the guys, but it's just a matter of if this team wants to win a championship, then certain, certain things got to change and it is what it is. It's a part of sure. the business. Yeah. All right. So we got Chicago and then Milwaukee. Chicago, I think is playing well. They just, I won. was just about to say, How's Chicago playing? Because <laughs> even if they were playing bad, it's how are we deciding to play? Because that's really what it comes down to. Every yeah. team could be sucking and we come to town or they come to town and all of a sudden they are playing lights out and we have decided maybe we will, maybe we won't. So we just, we just, hope that we can go into Chicago and play like we've got some pride and like we remember how to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chicago's on a three-game winning streak a right three now. three-game winning streak. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So maybe they're a little soft. Maybe they're like, ah, oh, we feeling good. We just won three games in a row and, and Golden State goes in there and kind of shocks them a little bit. But they're playing some some decent basketball right now. It would be a good win. And then you got Milwaukee the very next night. Milwaukee's kind of eh right now. I think they're just feeling yeah. the, January, the January blues right now. But but again, Warriors coming to town. Everybody going to be turned up. Right. Everybody Giannis gonna... is going to be trying to dunk all over Trace and everything. <laughs> Man, <laughs> poor Trace. Oh yeah, he was. He's but right. you know what? He battled. He battled tonight. So mm-hmm. he did what he could. Right. So yeah, he I think recently, score what nineteen points. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I think recently, what did he score? He did score nineteen points. Um, we've been seeing like both pods and Trace. It's like you're they're good, but they're good rookies. I think we're mm-hmm. starting to see a lot more that it's like they're good rookies. Yeah. They're not like veterans. They're going to have moments where they're not playing that well. Like Pods was a team worse. Yeah. Minus 31. He was, he was not good tonight. Yeah. And you didn't see him that much. 
what he ooh, but 25 minutes that's, 25 that's minutes. a lot even though mm -hmm. i felt like we didn't see him a lot yeah i mean he started so it's like start both halves did he start the second half no 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 moody started the second uh -uh. half no moody yeah yeah he probably played a lot of garbage time um, that's why his minutes got up but good yeah, like i said good rookies it's just like there's certain things that they aren't ready for yet uh certain things that they haven't seen there's a bunch of teams in the nba and players in the nba that they haven't played against yet so right you know like it's just going to be different for them they they got a learning curve that they have to you know go through and it's just this is why you can't really depend on rookies um if you want to be a, a really really good team at least not multiple so they're they're good rotation pieces but they shouldn't be starting and getting all these minutes and stuff like that and you expect to be a good team it's just not gonna happen so yeah got anything else to add no i just think uh <sighs> We got to lick our wounds. I'm sure, look, they should probably be traveling at night. Get get out there and get to Chicago like now. <laughs> but um, but they, they, they just, everything. yeah, they just got to, they just got to find themselves. But I think each player needs to look within themselves and play with a level of passion. And that you you want to be better because mm -hmm. I just feel like you're just some of them are just kind of out there and it's just like don't you want to play better? Come on, like mm -hmm. give yourself the opportunity to be better. Go out there and I guess we gotta reconnect because we're all kind of just looking disjointed and we just gotta we just gotta get it back together. We just got to get yeah. it back together and make the goal win. Look, mm -hmm. we need to win. We've got to work together to do that. So I agree. bring bring the energy, bring the energy. Facts. I agree. So that's what we're going to be looking out for the next two games. If they're bringing the energy, who is, who isn't, who's focused on winning and who's just out there going through the motions. Hope Mike is paying attention to that. Hope Steve is paying attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve, too. Come on, Steve. You got to snap out of it. Just just kind of dig deep. Go back to when you were, you know, mm -hmm. only getting 15 minutes and wondering, hey, can I play or whatever? Just, I don't know, just dig deep and, yeah. and just get something going. We got to start out hard out the gate like mm -hmm. no taking our time no just go it, it starts with <laughs> putting out a starting five that makes sense as well right right they, i mean they've had what 13 or 14 didn't different starting fives <laughs> so far this season it's, it's just kind of crazy by now <laughs> it's crazy i mean injuries don't help but come on bro you know who should be you know who you, your best player at each position is or has been this season right Trace has been your best center. Dario's not a center, so I won't I won't put them there. No, right? Don't Trace do that too. Don't do yeah. That. Trace has been better than Loon <laughs> this season. <laughs> yep. Um Kaminga has been your best four other than Draymond. So Draymond's not available. So Kaminga should be starting. Um Clay is your best three at this point. Um Moody has been your other best wing, probably. And Steph is Steph. You know, so could we after. see? Could hmm. we see? That starting lineup with I hope. Moses in it, I hope so. And move Pods to the bench. Yeah, this is what I, I mean when I said when I when I saw that CP3 was hurt. I said their starters should be Steph, Moody, Clay, JK, yeah, and Trace. Yeah. They haven't started it yet. Got blown out both games. <laughs> Use that starting lineup, please. Like, yeah, let's see how it goes. Exactly. It's like you tried everything else. Exactly. Why stop now? <laughs> the, uh, he tried everything except for the stuff that makes uh, sense. But right. <laughs> well, we'll see. Hopefully, that's a starting lineup. Hopefully, the last two games where Moses is pretty much scoring at like a, you know, like I said, point per minute pace. Yeah. Put him in the starting lineup. <laughs> like, Let's see what happens. 
But hopefully he he's okay because he did get he went to the locker room uh like in that third quarter or something mm. he tweaked something or it was the fourth quarter and he went back to the locker room he did give a thumbs up but let's just hope you know all yeah. this gravy with him yeah yeah so I hope we see that starting lineup and yeah that's all we got sounds great. Appreciate- Appreciate you guys for joining us. Golden Spaces Pod. You know, you can follow us on X on Instagram. You can watch us on YouTube if you're you're probably already watching us if you're seeing this picture right here. But tell a friend about us as well. You know, share us, subscribe to 957 the game so you can see when we are posted and leave a good review. You know, have we've been seeing a lot of the comments, you know, it's been good hoops conversation in the comments so keep that up please if you have any questions for us you can put them in the comments as well and we will see them and we may at, answer them on the next pod wherever the case may be but uh other than that keep supporting we appreciate it and we'll see you guys next time bye